Hi guys, in this video we are going to discuss the problem D flexible string revisit from code first is round 848 that was it for dev 2. This in particular is a bit of a hard problem however the only prerequisite it has is basic understanding of expectations. Uh, other than that I'll try to explain it explain this particular problem in a way that it's really easy to comprehend and underst uh, understandable. So with that let's get started. So the problem states that you are given two binary strings A and B of length n. In each move the string a is modified in the following way so a uh, index is chosen uniformly at random so we are not specifically picking any index but it has to be uniform so the probability of picking any index would actually be 1 over n where n is the length of the string then the character at that particular index in a is then flipped so if it's a 0 it becomes a 1 if it's a 1 it becomes a 0 so we have to tell them what is the expected number of moves required to make both the strings equal for the first time. So now uh, let's say we keep on picking some random values or we pick up, uh, keep on picking some random indices from A and keep on flipping them. Then after some moves, definitely after some finite moves, A would become B, right? So we have to tell them the number of moves. Also, since we can have a fractional value over here, so in order to avoid it, we actually have to multiply uh, the the denominator as modulus inverse right i hope if you are actually solving d you at least know about modulus inverse etc if you don't know i'll just ping the uh, put the link to one of the videos which actually talks about that in detail one other thing to note is that over here the m or the mod is not the typical one in nine plus seven it's actually a different value so please take a note of that as well cool with that let's get started with the solution I'll try to explain it in the best way possible. So let's talk about a base case. So we have a string A and a string B. What if string A is equal to B? If that's the case, then no move is required or zero moves is required. So as soon as we get the string, even without performing a single operation, we can say the both, uh, that both the strings are equal. So in that case, we'll simply return zero. Cool. That is the base case. Now, what would happen is that let's say f of x, this denotes uh, the number of moves required if the uh, if the two strings differ at x indices with that let's try to uh, like make a mathematical formula and get a hold around it so we'll say that f of x is equal to now let's say i uh, f of x basically means that x indices are different in the two strings so f of a, uh, when i say f of x then let's say i'm firstly picking the x indices which are actually different out of the n indices so their probable of the probability of picking out those x indices from n indices is actually x by n then over here i have already made a move so i'll add one and after making this move what would happen is since i've already picked the indices which are actually diff uh, which are actually different so now when I flip it, the number of different indices would decrease by one, right? So this would become f of x minus one. Plus, let's say I picked the index which uh, was already similar. So the number of similar indices would be n minus x. So the probability of picking that up would be n minus x by n. So one move has already been made. And now since I've chosen an already similar index, now that would become different. So now the uh, when I say that I picked the uh, similar index, I mean that I picked the index at which the characters at both, both the strings were similar, right? So with, uh, when I do that, the number of, uh, the number of characters at, at the indices uh, which are same would actually uh, decrease by one or the uh, indices at which the characters are different would increase by one, right? So this would become f of x plus one. Now we'll try to solve it further. So f of x is equal to x by n plus x by n into f of x minus 1 plus n minus x by n plus n minus x by n into f of x plus 1. So let's uh, add these two values, these two values. So we'll get uh, 1 by n into x plus n minus x. This would cancel out plus x by n into f of x minus 1 plus n minus x by n into f of x plus 1 cool so with that we get n by n that would be actually 1 plus x by n into f of n minus 1 plus n minus x by n into f of x plus 1 this actually is equal to f of x as we said right 
However, the only problem over here is that if I'm trying to calculate the value of f of x, what I require is the previous value that is f of x minus 1 and the uh, value that would be next to it that is f of x plus 1. So this becomes difficult to calculate. So what we can do is that we can proceed in a linear fashion. So uh, I can say that I want uh, I want to calculate the f of x, uh, the value f of x plus 1. So this would require f of x minus 1 and f of x uh, minus uh, yeah f of x so this would already be, have been known if i'm traversing from left to right so i would have already computed these two values that would be known for f of x plus one and hence i'll be able to proceed further i hope that's making sense right so i'll try to rewrite this equation in the same format so this would become let's say i keep this particular uh, particular thing on the left, left hand side i take the remaining thing on the right hand side so it will, uh, this would become n minus x over n into f of x plus 1 is equal to f of x minus 1 that is this term minus x by n into f of x minus 1 right now i multiply both the sides by okay both the, side, the sides by n divided by n minus x so this would get cancelled out this would now be n divided by n minus x into f of x minus 1 minus x by n into f of x minus 1 since we are having a div uh, division by n i'll just multiply n now so this would be 1 by n minus x into n into f of x minus n minus x into f of x minus 1 cool uh, the only thing that remains is so in order to maintain more linearity what i'll do is instead of x i'll write x minus 1 so this would become f of x minus 1 plus 1 is equal to 1 1 by n minus x minus 1 into n into f of x minus 1 minus x minus okay minus n minus x minus 1 into f of x minus 1 minus 1 would be minus 2 or to rewrite it i can say f of x is equal to 1 by n minus x minus 1 okay n into f of x minus 1 minus n okay minus x minus 1 to f of x minus 2 i hope this is making sense right so this is the equation we finally got now the problem is that if i'm starting from zero right for f of zero i already know that the answer is zero so zero moves are required if all this all the indices or the characters that all the indices in a and b are same what is f of one so if i know this particular value then it would be easy to calculate because uh, let's say i'm calculating for f of two then f of two actually requires f of two minus one and f of two minus two right so i already uh, i actually need the values of previous two then I, when i'll be recording f of 3 i'll already be having f of 2 and f of 1 so I'll, i can do that but i at least need these two values so what would be the value for this now there's an interesting thing that we can use over here although i know that it's not expected for you to know all of these things but this was just one such problem wherein if you had this particular knowledge then the things would have been much simpler for you i'll put a link of this uh, model in the youtube description you can read more about it but the gist of it is that let's say uh, you are having n particles or in this particular thing what you can say is in order to return back to the same state the expect expected number of moves is actually 2 to the power n right cool so over here let's say you were at f of 0 then to come back to f of 0 after making some moves the expected number of moves were 2 to the power n now from f of 0 the only next position you could have moved to because f of 0 basically means that all, all the uh, all the characters and the indices were same or the characters in a and b at their respective indices were same right so when you make a move the number of uh, different characters would actually become one so from f of 0 you can only go to f of 1 so you spend one move by doing doing it right now we already said that to come back to f of 0 you need 2 to the power n steps right okay so that would mean that one step is already exhausted while you do this so to go back from f of 1 to f of 0 the number of steps we actually require were 2 to the power n minus 1 because 2 to the power n steps were required to uh, like make this loop you already exhausted one of the steps so 2 to the power n minus 1 steps were required over here so with that we have f of 0 is equal to 0 
f of 1 is equal to 2 power n minus 1 then we can calculate f of 2 from the these two we can calculate f of 3 from these two we can calculate f of 4 from these two right so this is basic dp uh, dp solution uh, the space complexity can actually be order of 1 over here but just to make it more intuitive i've used an approach where uh, which uses order of n space complexity so let's look at the solution now okay i'll have it open over here yeah so this is the base case, uh, base case i'm checking that if the two strings are equal then just print zero and return now i'll need to calculate the number of indices at which these two strings are different right so i'm calculating that then i'm initializing a dp array okay you can actually use it uh, up till the difference but yeah it's good actually cool no worries about this then as i said that the number of moves required if no uh, no two correct uh, if all the characters in the two strings are same is actually zero and for dp1 the value is 2 to power n minus 1 so that's exactly what i'm doing over here then i'll uh, start from index 2 till difference right then that's this is the same exact mathematical formula that you have seen uh, the only difference over here is that when you are uh, when instead of dividing we are actually multiplying it by modulus inverse because that's what the quotient expects us to do right so that's what we are doing over here the ex uh, rest the entire mathematical formula is exactly same you can uh, reach uh, recheck the video you'll get uh, get the idea after that i'm simply printing out the value that is stored at the dp diff so dp difference basically uh, just to reiterate dp difference basically means how many number of steps are required if the number of different characters in the two strings are this much cool so that would actually be my answer i tried this solution let me try this again if you want give me a second okay actually tried it over here itself so you can see this cool so over here you can see this is the ac solution and that's exactly what i've done Cool, so with that, uh, the video comes to an end. I know this is a hard problem, but I tried my best to explain this to you. If you still have a doubt, let me know. Also, there was another approach to this question, but that actually was a lot of advanced mathematics. I didn't want you to get confused using uh, that sort of uh, mathematics. So that's the only reason I uh, tried explaining this particular approach to you guys. Cool, if you still have a doubt, let me know. I'll be more than willing to help you out. Cool, guys, thanks a lot for watching this video. Bye-bye.